she is providing them with a lot of misinformation and false promises, which is really disappointing to see. Firstly, if you're watching this, go to my Instagram page right now and click on my story in which I'm asking questions for the upcoming 30k Q&A because I'm going to start collecting questions now, which I can then answer. Or go to the comment section below, whichever you prefer, because obviously the last one was like the TikTok legging haul, and the theme of this one being November is going to be mental health. Obviously, your questions don't have to be surrounding mental health, but if you do have any mental health questions you want to ask me about anything, experiences, whatever it is, I will be completely honest and lay it all out on the table if you want me to. Just basically ask me anything, but the theme is mental health, if that gives you any direction if you are unsure what to ask. I'm going to be straight off the bat with you, uh, I'm about to bring the source, but I'm going to do so in a respectful and hopefully educational manner, as I always try and do. Blow Galates, somebody I have covered here and there throughout, but somebody who was actually sent to me recently on the Instagram DMs, and I saw the, the video that was sent to me, I said, mm, this should probably needs to be addressed actually, because I've never really gone into mass detail about it. Very quickly, before we do, obviously, I know I said this in the community post yesterday, but honestly, thank you so much for the 30,000 subscribers. I genuinely can't express how much it means to me and how appreciative I am of all of you. The fact that you even choose to invest your time into my content and my channel and appreciate my opinion genuinely means the world to me. So again, I can't thank you enough. The challenge of the likes and stuff, a thousand likes in 24 hours is a big one. So we're going to shoot for it. Can we do it? Let's find out. Here's the deal. If I teach you something new today, you have to subscribe to the channel. I think that's fair. Comment question of the week. At the end of the video, I answer a question from the comment section. Drop it down below in the comment section. I shall do so. Hat time. What's mad is I have quite a large head, and this is too big for my head. But it's actually kind of comfortable because it's so big. Blow Galates, a person on the Instagram, on the TikTok, on the YouTube. True story, I'm actually using my gaming Instagram because she's blocked me on my TFNL Instagram. It's just like being on Tinder again. No text back and the occasional block. It's unbelievable. Maybe it's the hats, I don't know. A lot of people were saying previously that they used to like a lot of her content when it was more Pilates focused because obviously I know she is a qualified Pilates instructor. According to her YouTube, she claims she's a qualified Pilates and fitness instructor. I'm gonna assume she's a qualified personal trainer as well, but I'm not entirely sure. We're gonna go through some of her Instagram and TikTok reels, and we're gonna have a talk about what, what's occurring, and I'm gonna explain and justify whether I agree with something or whether I disagree with something, and why. I promise it'll blow your mind. Welcome to your world of weightless biceps. The positioning of the fingers and hands are extremely important if you want to feel it in the right place. Your biceps, I'm gonna be straight with you, that's in the bin. Let's have a look at it. You're basically doing a press up variation. Any press press movement is going to be tricep dominant. Your biceps are not involved. Let's look at it from the biomechanics side of things. The primary purpose of the tricep is elbow extension, so straightening the elbows, which is what you would do in a press up. I think we can all agree. Straightening the elbows, that's elbow extension, therefore triceps. The primary purpose of the biceps is elbow flexion, bending the elbows. I know some of you are thinking, oh, but Harry, look, the elbows are bending there. The elbows are bending there. The biceps are not having to do that. Gravity's doing that for her. The elbows are extending under load, which is her body weight. Therefore, it's a tricep movement, not a bicep movement. Regardless of whether you put your hands like that, you rotate them round, put them behind your head, put them on the ceiling, put them in the bin, who knows? It's not gonna work your biceps. Biomechanically, that's just not how it works. So if you see any pressing movement where you're forcing resistance away from you, so like a dumbbell press, a bench press, even like a press up where you're forcing away from you, that is gonna be tricep dominant, we're looking at the muscles of the arm. If there's anything that's pulling weight towards you, so any pulling motion, that's gonna be bicep dominant because obviously you're bending the arm. I do want to appreciate what people are doing right. Blow Galantis has a huge following, a massive following. She's a very popular influencer and I do really appreciate the fact that she is getting people doing something because something is always better than nothing. I will always appreciate that. I will always be thankful that somebody is doing that. The issue I have is when you start pushing out misinformation like this, it's actually quite a slippery slope because a lot of people invest their trust into content creators. A lot of you guys watching this video right now probably trust me to be telling you the truth and to be giving you accurate and reliable information. Information. The same applies with any of these content creators. People who don't really know training or quite new to training will look at what Blogilates is doing and be like, you know what, she's in great shape, as she is, she looks fantastic, so maybe what she's doing must be working. Then you do what she is doing, and you're like, oh, why am I seeing the same results as her? You then start thinking it's a you problem. That's not a you problem. I'm telling you now, biomechanically, this is not a bicep movement, regardless of where you put your hands. It doesn't work like that. This is actually a her problem for producing misinformation like this, and it's really disappointing to see. You spread misinformation 
information, unrealistic expectations that can have a negative impact on the mental health of consumers. And that's an absolute no-go in my eyes. Don't get me wrong, I think Pilates is fantastic. If you want to do Pilates, you know what, you do Pilates. But regardless of what style of training you're doing, I'm saying biomechanically this is not correct. Again, this is just my kind of observation, but I feel like Blogilates word singings in a manner that suggests that these workouts are hypertrophy focused, so the building of muscle, because that's kind of what she is implying, but then we'll kind of mask it by being like, oh, it's a Pilates workout, it's not just about building muscle. It's not what you kind of are implying, it's about building muscle, so if I'm not rocking 22 inch biceps pretty quickly, I'll be livid about that. Stop what you're doing and go stand by the wall and stretch. You're not in trouble. Tell that to my parents when I was a child, I was always in trouble. True story, when I was actually going to do something naughty, I used to go up to my grandma and be like, Grandma, I'm going to be naughty in a minute, because I couldn't say naughty because I was quite young. But then I go and break something, pretty much. This is why you're shorter than you should be. Let's find out. Normal things you're doing throughout the day. You're looking down at your phone, hunching over at your computer, causing you to have terrible posture. She's kind of like implying that you can grow taller by doing these movements. So like at the end of the day, if you're six foot three, you are six foot three. That's just, that is what it is. But then flip it round, stating that you're not as tall as you should be, because of your posture isn't actually incorrect. Because realistically, if you stand up nice and tall, you are gonna be the tallest you will be. If you hunch over, immediately I've lost like an inch, maybe two. But if you do want to essentially appear taller, but technically not actually make yourself taller, just stand up straighter. And stretching can really help posture. Do you prefer arm workouts with or without weights? There's benefits to both, of course, but weightless is always so magical to me because it's crazy what your body weight and gravity can do. People who stumble onto blow galates see my weightless arm workouts and immediately say, that doesn't work. Ha, like, please continue to live in your ignorantly blissful world where nothing but the way you do things works. We'll go exercise by exercise here. I'm gonna talk about each one. So she's pulsing her shoulders up and down. If anything, it's gonna be more of a shoulder dominant movement than a bicep or tricep dominant movement. There is no elbow extension, there is no elbow flexion. Therefore, biceps and triceps, even if they were under load, wouldn't really be doing anything. The pulsing will make your shoulders burn. Is it gonna lead you to grow? Probably not, and I'll explain why shortly. Prayer pulse, hands together, touching. Again, that shoulders, that's anterior delt heavy. A bit of external rotation, so a bit of rotator cuff. Again, it's, it's very much a shoulder dominant workout. So realistically, Yes, bodyweight workouts can be great. They have a time, they have a place, they have a benefit. Absolutely, I'm not doubting that whatsoever. In these movements, there is no anchor, really. You just have the weight of your arm, which again, is probably gonna be quite limited. Let's say you're stumbling across this workout because the primary goal of yours is to build muscle. The primary factor to consider when looking at building muscle is mechanical tension. So that's essentially weight lifted, weight shifted. To increase mechanical tension, you would then progressively overload, increase weight, or increase reps or sets, volume to some degree. Weight is what people usually refer to when looking at progressive overload, despite there being many ways to progressively overload. Mechanical tension here is, is limited because there is no weight. How would you progressively overload this? because you can only do time-based movements for so long. Yes, it will burn, absolutely. You're under tension for quite a significant period of time. When I say just because you're hurting, it doesn't mean you're working it. Let's say I'm doing a bicep curl, I'm curling. I'm tensing really hard. It really burns, I'm gonna hold it there for a minute. 10 seconds in, it's getting a bit crampy. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not nice, I'm sweating. That hurts. Does it mean it's gonna achieve hypertrophy, i.e. the building of muscle? No, it's not. You also gotta think about fiber recruitment. So muscle fibers. So let's say I do a bicep curl with my gorilla pole. I do a bicep curl. The resistance is minimal. Do you know what I mean it, it weighs grams? Therefore, I'm going to recruit very few muscle fibers to actually have to curl it because I don't. I'd have to try. Do you know what I mean it doesn't take a lot of my muscle to move this, and that's likely not going to result in any actual muscle breakdown. To build muscle, you must break the muscle for it to then rebuild. Then I pick up a 20 kilo dumbbell and curl it. Now I have to try, far more muscle fibers are gonna to have to engage, fire and work in order to move that weight from A to B to perform the bicep curl. You gotta think about how much of your muscle and how many muscle fibers are actually having to be recruited to actually take you through that range of motion. When you're looking at like optimizing muscle building, you gotta look at a few things. You need to take a body part through a range of motion in which the muscles or muscle you are trying to target are lengthened and shortened under load. So using resistance. The muscle is not really going through any periods of lengthening or shortening it is kind of hovering around a relatively shortened position. That's like if I did a bicep curl and went like this. Not only have I not reached peak contraction in which the muscle's at its shortest, which is here, I've also not reached a peak stretch in which the muscle is at its longest, being here. If you are new to training and you've never done anything, this may likely do something. Is it optimal for the building of muscle? No. Is it gonna take you quite far? Probably not. I'm always searching for new ways to use my body as a weight. People get so caught up in this narrow-minded thinking that lifting weights only means lifting dumbbells and barbells and that 
is the only thing that works. I don't have patience for the gang of bros looking to push their toxic gym culture ideology down people's throats. You wanna know what works? Whatever workout you can look forward to and can give you the results you want. I actually back there, obviously yeah, what works for you is the one you can remain most consistent with and consistency usually comes with an element of enjoyment. You gotta enjoy what you're doing, otherwise you're not gonna do it. Can give you the results you want is a big thing here because I honestly don't think these workouts can and I'm actually really disappointed by them. I've already expressed my appreciation for Blogilates for getting people into the gym, especially with such a large platform. But what upsets me and what I find most disappointing, she has the power to educate millions of people because her platform is huge. She is providing them with a lot of misinformation and false promises, which is really disappointing to see. Imagine if she was actually preaching scientifically backed training methods and styles and things that were actually factually correct. Think about how many more people would go into the gym more confidently, who would have a better idea and understanding of how to train effectively for them. Like there's so many things. It's just disappointing. And then she blames it on like toxic gym culture. I'm gonna be honest, I think gym culture can be, not saying it is, but it can be very toxic. A lot of gym men, bros go into the gym, testosterone corner, think they're the bee's knees because they do a pretty heavy bicep curl. But at the end of the day, just because you pick things up and put them down, and just because you pick up more weight than somebody else does not make you any more or less valuable than them. You are still a human. You are all of equal value. Strength, size, whatever it may be, does not determine how valuable you are. A lot of these gym dudes who are overly fixated on how strong they are and that being their like primary characteristic and like display of their worth probably lack a lot of personality, unfortunately. Have you ever experienced DOMS? I saw a couple of days after workouts, it's called DOMS. This is actually appropriate to the common question of the week. Delay DOMS have muscle soreness, doesn't matter how you are. It can happen when you dial up your intensity. Actually, this is true. So DOMS, delay DOMS have muscle soreness, have no correlation to the effectiveness of a workout. A lot of people say, oh, I was really sore after my workout, must have been really good. Doesn't mean that, unfortunately. DOMS are usually a result of the introduction of a new stimulus. So if you've never done a certain movement before and then do it for the first time, you'll probably be quite sore afterwards. Stimulus doesn't always need to be movements. It can be heightened intensity, things like that. Doing something different and something new or something that you're maybe not familiar with will often result in delayed onset of muscle soreness. When men tell me that, that Pilates does nothing, do they realize people have different bodies, different interests and different goals? There is audio playing, but I can't play it. This is what's gonna happen. I'll play this video and YouTube will present me with this. This is my face. This is a copyright claim. Ouch, that hurt. If Pilates will help you achieve the results you want and it's the training you enjoy the most, I'm 100% behind you. I think, like I said at the start, I think Pilates can be pretty solid. I fully acknowledge, appreciate and respect that there are so many ways to train. I think every training method, style or approach has a purpose and that purpose must align with your goals. And if it does, perhaps that could be the training style for you. And if you enjoy it, then you're probably gonna remain pretty consistent with it, which is gonna be so important. In conclusion, although Blogilates was was spouting some, some true source, like I said with the doms and those bits of bobs, which I do respect and I do appreciate, I really am disappointed by the fact that somebody in her position of influential power is producing a lot of content that is actually promoting mass misinformation, which again, I think is really dangerous and damaging. I'm not here trying to bash anybody, I just want people to produce Produce good information, the stuff that's going to help people rather than harm and hinder them, which I think a lot of this content could actually do. And I don't want this video to come across as negative because I'm never trying to be negative. It's just upsetting to see information like this being produced. But now we must crack on with comment question of the week. How to know the difference between your back hurting because it's being used, e.g. ache, fatigue, and back pain that comes from injury, wrong technique. There are so many ways to approach it, but I'll approach it just from one avenue. If you're doing, let's say, a movement like a deadlift and you feel something go during the movement, something may have occurred, potentially an injury. If you wake up the next day after your session or a couple of days later, wherever it may be, and you're like, oh, my back really hurts and it's really achy, that that probably is soreness and it should subside over a few days. The wrong technique or right technique doesn't always mean injury. You can lift perfectly, but sometimes muscles are working incorrectly, like one is being a bit more dominant because one is like getting blown out, whatever it may be. Imbalances occurring, all sorts. That can lead to injury despite how great your technique is. Flip it around, just because you're lifting with bad technique doesn't mean you're gonna get injured. I know people who lift a lot more than I do with some pretty questionable technique and have never once been injured. Some people are just more prone to injury for many reasons. That is it. That is the video. A thousand likes is the goal. That'll be bloody splendid if we get that in 24 hours because it makes me big happy and really helps the channel out. Please do subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button down below and the bell next to it. And at the end of the video, comment question of the week, drop a question down below in the comment section and I shall answer it at the end of the next video. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my pretty flappy ears right now. I look like Dumbo the elephant. And thank you for tolerating the video.